What's going on everyone? Dan Murphy here and in this video I'm going to be talking about how to set up and structure your cryptocurrency portfolio. Because if you're watching this channel there's a very good chance that uh, you are you know you're interested in cryptocurrency you're probably already invested into a number of different cryptocurrencies or you at least have maybe you bought some Bitcoin and you've been looking at all the different altcoins are, that are available and you're not exactly sure how to proceed because you want to be investing in a crypto you want to be investing into altcoins and not just Bitcoin and you want to diversify your investments but you're not really sure how to go about it so the point of this video is to I'm going to be providing with you some uh, some different investment strategies that could potentially help you out in organizing your your cryptocurrency portfolio and how to allocate your funds and before I get into that just want to real quick take a look at some of the recent market trends that we've seen Oh, we've been seeing quite a bit of a pullback recently. We see a lot of, you know, double digit reds, a lot of things are down. Ripple has almost lost, you know, almost like 50% of its previous valuation. And from what I've been hearing from a number of different sources, the main reason why we're seeing such a large pullback right now is that Coin Market Cap, uh the the website Coin Market Cap, they actually they removed some of the listings or some of the price listings for pretty much everything from some of the South Korean exchanges and the for whatever reason the South Korean exchanges they tend to list all these various cryptocurrencies at a slight premium meaning that the prices that they show the, that they have on their exchange tend to be higher than the prices on most other exchanges and for whatever reason that's just kind of the way it is in for the South Korean cryptocurrency exchanges so simply by removing all of those price listings from the South Korean exchanges it kind of just lowered the price of pretty much everything across the board just because um, you know the price that they display it's an average of the prices for all the major exchanges and just by removing a listing from exchanges that have that tend to have higher prices than everybody else um, it kind of just you know it it lowered the price of everything or at least the perception of the price for everything but so you know the numbers were slightly lower than usual and I think this this started kind of a a chain reaction where people saw that everything was down it kind of triggered some panic selling and when that happens it drives the price down even further so you know it's a combination of they removed the the price listings from the South Korean exchanges that had premium prices compared to the other exchanges and then the way people reacted to seeing that the prices had went down was um, there was a fair amount of selling which then caused prices to go down even further so you know we're seeing a pretty healthy correction right now in the markets but I mean, to be completely honest, I'm, I I feel like this was, you know, it the fact that it was somewhat artificially um, influenced by Coin Market Cap just pulling off those listings and then you know just changing the price and everything. Despite the fact that it was essentially triggered by that, I think this is a fairly healthy correction. We were seeing you know quite a bit of exuberance in this market. You know, we had a lot of crazy run-ups. Pretty much everything was on all-time highs. So you know, in some ways, it kind of is good to see a correction like this because. I mean, not only does it give you a position to, you know, buy some more cryptos at what is essentially a discount, so you can, you know, add on to your positions and, you know, basically just double down on your investments. It's a good buying opportunity where everything's in the red. But, you know, if we, it just shows that there's there's still a healthy market activity going on because, you know, you can't just have everything keep going up and up and up all the time without there being any sort of a dip or sort of correction. And then seeing this. Um, it's, you know, it's, it's almost like a relief because sometimes, you know, it's almost uncanny how much everything just keeps going up in crypto and it makes you wonder, you know, how, how long this can continue. But when you do see the dips like this, uh, for me, at least it's an indication that we still have room to grow. But that being said, that's just kind of my opinion on, on that whole situation with coin market cap and just the general market trends we're seeing right now. But with that being said, let's get into the cryptocurrency portfolio strategies that I'm going to have for you. So I have a number of different strategies here, a number of different ways that you can structure your cryptocurrency portfolio to diversify your assets and try and in some cases mitigate risk or in other cases accept a higher level of risk in order to attain a higher level of reward. So with that being said, let's get into it. So number 1, structure 1 for your cryptocurrency portfolio. This involves Allocating your resources in such a way that you are at 40% Bitcoin, 40% Ethereum, and 20% altcoins. And the benefit of using, of structuring your 
your cryptocurrency portfolio in this manner is that um, you have a higher level of stability. You have 80% of your portfolio invested into Bitcoin being the most popular and then Ethereum being either the second or third most popular for the, you know, for the longest time. It was number two. You know, we had seen Ripple overtake Ethereum pretty recently. But prior to that happening, Bitcoin and Ethereum were the top two cryptos. So by having most of your investments in either Bitcoin or Ethereum, uh, it's more or less kind of... Um, it's just more of a stable long-term position because for the most part, we've seen that the price of Bitcoin and the price of Ethereum, well, yes, they do go up, they do go up, they do go down. There's natural fluctuations in the price. However, they have more or less been holding their value in a relatively stable manner. So, you know, there, there is, yes, there's a chance that they could go down, but the chance of either Bitcoin or Ethereum going down significantly is much lower compared to other cryptocurrencies, especially when you get into some of the more obscure altcoins and the really, you know, the small market cap altcoins. And we do 20% altcoins for this structure because um, we do still want to play the altcoin market a little bit because the altcoin market, it is, it has the highest fluctuations. It's the most... You know, it's the most volatile. You have the highest potential for gains in altcoins, but there's also significant risk involved in investing in altcoins, more so compared to Bitcoin and Ethereum. See, with altcoins, you have this potential to get maybe 10x, 20x, you know, 50 or even 100x gains. You're not really going to have that happen with Bitcoin and Ethereum. With Bitcoin and Ethereum, you you could get like 2 2x or 3x gains, maybe. Four. But, you know, that's more for, you know, a long-term investment position. And that's even indicated in this, uh, you know, in the way I describe the structure is that uh, your your positions in Bitcoin and Ethereum, these are long-term positions. You're buying it and you're going to hold for, you know, six months or more. Now, with the altcoins, it doesn't necessarily need to be, be a, uh, doesn't need to be a long-term position. But, you know, the main idea is that, you know, mostly in Bitcoin and Ethereum, stable store of value type plays. So that's structure one. Let's move on to structure two. Now this is, it's similar to structure, uh, structure one, but we are more heavy into altcoins. So we still have, you know, significant portion dedicated to both Bitcoin and Ethereum, which have, you know, they have a proven track record. They have a long history of being a stable store of value that still has the potential to increase in value. You know, many people still believe that Bitcoin is still going to go up. It could potentially reach, you know, 50K or 100K, some have even said. So, you know, it's a pretty good bet investing in a Bitcoin. It's pretty unlikely that, you know, it's not going to go up. And I think the same thing goes for Ethereum. I think Ethereum is also a very good long-term position for you to take with your investments. But with this structure, we are going heavier into altcoins. So slightly more speculative. It has a slightly higher risk-reward ratio compared to structure one. However, the, the potential benefit of investing in altcoins is that you can, you know, by investing into altcoins, you have that potential to get those, you know, those 10x, 20x, you know, 30, 40, even 50 or 100x potential gains. And you're only going to see that by investing into altcoins compared to Bitcoin and Ethereum. So that's structure two, both pretty similar. It really just comes down to, you know, what level of risk are you comfortable taking? And would you rather, you know, take a slightly higher risk reward ratio by going more into altcoins? Or would you rather have a higher level of stability by focusing on Bitcoin and Ethereum. So that's those two structures, but let's move on to another one. So structure three, somewhat similar to the last one, but so we're going 25% Bitcoin here and 75% altcoins. And when I say altcoins, uh, I do also, I include Litecoin and Ethereum as well. Um, you know, Ethereum, it's kind of like its own thing, even though, you know, it's considered an altcoin, but it's also kind of an old, it, it's, it's a, uh, own thing. But so with this, uh, you have an even slightly higher risk and reward potential compared to structure two, since we're going 75% into altcoins compared to 50% into altcoins. And your 25% into Bitcoin is going to be a long-term position. So you're going to be holding, holding this, you know, for the long term, going to be six, at least, you know, six months or more, probably years for Bitcoin, because, you know, there's people suggesting, you know, I know John McAfee, he got a lot of publicity for saying this, but he said that Bitcoin will be a million dollars by 2020. Now, I don't necessarily think 
that personally, but it just goes to show you that, you know, if someone like John McAfee, who is really a, kind of a high profile individual in the cryptocurrency space, he's very influential in crypto. And he is so sure that Bitcoin is going to be a million dollars in 2020 that he literally said that he was going to eat his own dick on national television. I'm not joking. McAfee has said this. And, you know, it's kind of ridiculous that he would even go as far to say that, but it does show that how confident he is that Bitcoin is going to go up. So that's why we put 25% into Bitcoin, but we're going, you know, heavier into altcoins, 75% into altcoins. But again, I think it is definitely worth it to try and play the altcoin market because, you know, we've seen it this year. There have been massive gains in the altcoin market. You know, we've seen Ripple. Ripple went from like 20 cents to, you know, all the way up to like $3.00. Three dollars and like forty cents, I think, at the all-time high. You know, since then we've seen a significant pullback. But it just goes to show you that there is a massive potential for gain investing into altcoins. So, if you are comfortable with that slightly higher risk-reward profile, and you want to really play that altcoin market, you know, maybe this kind of structuring would be good for you. And you know, you can still have a significant amount into Ethereum if you'd like to try and you know have it be you know have some more stability. Because basically, when it comes to investing in altcoins, let me just go back to coin market cap here real quick. Basically, the lower you go down on this list in the top 100, it's kind of like your the the risk factor goes up. The potential for reward definitely goes up too. But basically, if you want to invest in more, if you're looking for stability, stick to the top 10 coins. It's pretty hard to go wrong with these top 10 coins. Like we're still seeing, you know, there are fluctuations still even in the top 10. Especially, I mean, like I, I talked about Ripple earlier, we've seen a really big pullback in Ripple. So, again, that kind of shows you the risk in these altcoins. You know, Ripple lost about like 50% of its valuation since the all-time high a couple days ago, about a week ago. And, you know, but same thing for Stellar. Stellar went to as high as, um, I think, like 90 cents at the all-time high. And, you know, we've seen a significant pullback of almost 50%. But that being said, investing into these coins... I think for the most part, you know, it's it's going to be safer than investing into something, you know, further down the list. But, you know, this is not 100%, you know, guaranteed every time. But just I think a general rule of thumb is that, you know, the closer you are to the top 10 or the top 50 coins, you're going to be safer than if you were investing in, you know, once we get down here to the 100s or, you know, if you even go beyond that into, you know, the next 100 into the top 200 coins and the top 300 coins. When you're in that, in that range of 200 to 300 coins, you know, there's still potential for gain there, certainly. But again, it's kind of like your your risk profile just kind of goes up the lower you go down this list. So, you know, you can be 75% in all coins, but be primarily invested into either the top 10 or the top 50 coins to try and reduce your risk profile that way. So that's structure three. Let me move on to the next one. Okay, structure four. This is heavy into Ethereum. 40% Ethereum, 10% Bitcoin, 50% altcoins. So the idea behind this type of structuring and this investment strategy is that if you are someone who really believes in Ethereum and you think that Ethereum is the future, then, and you're not too big on Bitcoin, like you recognize that Bitcoin, you know, it's the most popular cryptocurrency, a ton of people are investing in Bitcoin, but, you know, you're still not convinced that, Bitcoin is going to be the most popular cryptocurrency in the future, then you might want to go with a strategy like this. And now this 40% Ethereum, um, I do want to make a distinction here. It doesn't necessarily have to be Ethereum. I do think it would be your safest bet is probably putting it 40% in Ethereum compared to some other altcoins. It's probably the second most stable, you know, cryptocurrency besides Bitcoin. And, but I make this distinction because the whole thing with Ethereum is that not only is it a digital currency, it's a way to transfer value, it's also, it is a platform where people can build these decentralized applications on top of the Ethereum network. And I think it's that aspect of Ethereum where, you know, it's doing, it's doing something else beyond, you know, just what Bitcoin is doing. Bitcoin, you know, it's a peer-to-peer -peer digital currency, it's a transference of value. But Ethereum, you know, Ethereum can do that. It can, it can be a peer-to-peer -peer digital currency and a transference of value, but it also has this added functionality where you know you can build these decentralized applications on top of the ethereum network and a lot of icos are these decentralized applications that are being built on top of ethereum it's it's actually kind of interesting that you know a lot of some of the more popular altcoins they're being in some of these the icos that have been released 
they're being built on top of Ethereum. So in a way, by investing in Ethereum, you're also kind of, um, you're not investing directly into these other ICOs, but for all, all these ICOs and all these different, you know, decentralized apps that are being built on top of Ethereum, when those projects do really well and they become popular, it also benefits Ethereum. So by investing in Ethereum, not only, like, you're, you're investing in also, you know, kind of, you're indirectly investing in all of the different, you know, the projects and the ICOs that have been built on top of Ethereum. So you can benefit from their success. And in that way, it's almost kind of like an ETF in crypto, where it's like, it's like a collection of a variety of different, you know, projects and assets that are all kind of tied together through Ethereum. So I think Ethereum has a lot going for it. And I definitely agree that, you know, having that added functionality of being able to build decentralized apps on top of the Ethereum network is, you know, that's a very good, you know, value proposition for Ethereum. So it makes sense why it would be worth investing in. So high Ethereum, low Bitcoin, uh, again, both long-term positions and 50% altcoins because because we still we still want to play that altcoin market because at least for me at least I feel like there's just way too much of an opportunity with altcoins right right now to not be investing in altcoins. So that's why we're going to go 50% of the altcoins. And you know here I say I say short slash long-term positions in altcoins because you know with altcoins I think in general you do want to kind of have these these short-term positions where you know, you're you're basically doing like a swing trade. Like you invest, and you know maybe you hold on to it for a couple days, a couple weeks, you know maybe even a month. But you're not necessarily holding all these altcoins for like a year or multiple years. But you can, you can do that, and that's also why I put long-term positions. You can have long-term positions in altcoins, but I think right now, at least in the current state of the crypto market, that you know playing these altcoins for swing trades is probably going to be your best bet. And because, you know, you're seeing these altcoins where they're having these massive runups where they're gaining, you know, like 10x, 20x, 50x, what have you, you know, increases in their valuation. And this is all taking place over the course of maybe a couple of weeks. And, you know, you can just buy in and, you know, hopefully they have that run up and you basically just sell off, just sell out of your position after the huge run up and just lock in some profits because, you know, the all-time highs they can't really hold on forever and, and you're seeing this a lot with these altcoins where they have this really big run-up massive boom reach an all-time high and then there's just like a 50 percent correction so that kind of market environment i think really benefits a swing trade because you can just sell off at the all-time high and then get out before the massive correction that's going to take place after so all right structure five this is the highest risk but it also comes with the highest highest potential for reward and this is just going all in on altcoins, 100% altcoins. Now, me personally, I would not, I would not do this. I think you want to, you at least want to have some Bitcoin. I think you don't want to have, you, I think at least you want to have 10% Bitcoin in your portfolio, because, again, it's just, you know, it's the most stable. Pretty, yeah, it's proven itself to be one of, if not the most stable cryptocurrency, at least in terms of, you know, keeping and maintaining its value. So you always want to have some Bitcoin. But that being said, you know, some people, you know, I've heard of people doing this. They're just all in on altcoins, 100% altcoins. And, you know, I, I totally get it. I totally get it. If you've, if you've been watching the altcoin market in the past couple of weeks, past couple of months, you've seen that there have been massive gains in the altcoin market. And, you know, you basically just rationalize that, you know, why would I invest in Bitcoin when I'm only likely to get maybe a two or three or four X returns. And that's for a long-term investment when I can just go all in on these altcoins where I can get, you know, 10 X, 20 X, 50 X my money over the course of a couple days or a couple weeks. And, you know, that's a reasonable argument and I totally get it. And, you know, it's not like I don't invest in the altcoins. I'm, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm slightly over 50% investment in the altcoins and I'll show you exactly what my portfolio looks like in a little bit later in this video. So, you know, I get it. I'm invested pretty heavily into altcoins as well, but I still think it's worth having, you know, a more stable long-term position in some of the the top players in the market, especially Bitcoin. I think you you always want to have at least some Bitcoin. At least that's that's how I feel about it. So, structure 6. So this is heavy on Bitcoin but still trying to play the altcoin game. So, you know, I put this range here because, you know, it's kind of the same depending on which way you want to take it. But so either 50-50, even split between Bitcoin and altcoins, 
or you go 75% Bitcoin, 25% altcoins. So this is, you know, you're you're banking on Bitcoin, but you're also you're craving some more stability in your portfolio. So I mean, you know, majority or at least half or majority of your portfolio being dedicated to Bitcoin, but still some amount into altcoins. So, you know, pretty pretty straightforward there. And all right, structure seven. 100% Bitcoin, all in on Bitcoin, high stability, but lower potential for reward. And, you know, I mentioned this earlier in the video, the highest gains are going to be in altcoins. Uh, there's no doubt about that. However, you know, altcoins, they also do carry the highest level of risk. So, you know, it's really, you know, what, what level of risk are you comfortable with? Some people only want to just invest in Bitcoin and just hold on to Bitcoin. Me personally, I want to hold Bitcoin, but I also want to be investing in altcoins. So those are the main strategies that, you know, I think would be worth considering. And with that being said, let's get into the breakdown of my portfolio. So what crypto is am I holding? What is the breakdown of my holdings? So right now, in the present state of things, my portfolio is 25% Bitcoin, 10% Ethereum, and 65% altcoins now it's not going to stay like this forever i do plan on reallocating some of my assets and i think um ultimately i want to move closer to the 25 percent bitcoin 25 percent ethereum 50 percent altcoin type structure um which one was that okay so structure two yeah i think ultimately long term i want to move my portfolio to being something closer to this structure however in the current state of things i am you know, more so into altcoins than anything else. And, you know, that's just kind of where I'm at right now. Like I said, I am going to change some things around. But, okay, more specifically, what what what's the altcoin breakdown? Which altcoins am I investing in? Now, I've talked about a number of these different altcoins on my channel. I referenced all of these altcoins in my top altcoins to watch video in 2018. I will leave a link for that video in the description if you want to... Um, you know, get my my coverage of some of these coins and how I thought about them and my rationale for why I think these coins would be good investments. I talk about a number of different altcoins in that video as well, but these are the ones that I've actually you know invested into personally. So I'm at 29% in Digibyte, 18% in Cardano, 15% IOTA, and 2% Substratum. And now the way I'm doing this percentage right now, it's based on what is the USD valuation of the amount of these individual cryptocurrencies that I have in my portfolio? So, you know, Cardano, there was a, a pretty significant correction in Cardano. This percentage, this would be higher if Cardano was at, at the previous levels where it was a few days ago uh, when it was at the all-time high. But, you know, so these percentages fluctuate. Again, it's based on the dollar value of the amounts that I have. But, you know, that that pretty much gives you the general breakdown. So, you know, I'm 65% altcoins. These are the altcoins I've invested in. I plan on investing into some more altcoins in the future and I will, you know, some of these numbers will change. I think I'm going to, you know, invest more into Cardano. And I'm probably going to for now I'm I might just sell off this position in Substratum even though I really do like the project. This, you know, it's such a small part of my portfolio and it was more that um I didn't really, you know, I didn't really dedicate that much capital to investing in a substract substratum. This was more so me just I was kind of just taking some of the extra Bitcoin I had left over from some of the previous trades. And I figured, you know, why not? I'll just invest in substratum. We'll see how it goes. It looked like it was to it looked like it was gonna be poised for, you know, some significant gains at the time that I invested. And it definitely was. I bought in at around sixty cents. Right now substratum is like I think it's somewhere around like 250 or more. So there's definitely been a lot of gains in Substratum. And there have been pretty much significant gains in all of these so far, except for IOTA, or at least at the time that I chose to invest. IOTA has had massive gains overall, if you look at the past three months. Um, however, the time at which I chose to buy into IOTA, it was not really that good. It wasn't a good time to buy in. It was actually, you know, pretty close to around the all-time high. And, you know, I made that mistake of buying into the FOMO. I saw that IOTA was skyrocketing and I was like, oh, I got to get in on this. I bought in at like $4 and it has been, you know, more or less consolidating around that same level 
it hasn't really been having much significant gains and right now it's actually at a dip so it is below somewhere i think it's like around three dollars and eighty cents so i'm down down on my investments in iota but for me iota was a long-term position um i was just planning on buying and holding iota for the long term i do think there's definitely more potential for iota to you know gain more value and get back up there to some of you know the previous levels and the previous all-time high and then hopefully break out to new all-time highs but for everything else so for digibyte cardano and substratum i am definitely up on those investments and there have been significant gains in them but yeah so that's that's my portfolio that's the way i'm doing it like i said i'm going to switch things around and you know try and get closer to the 25 percent bitcoin 25 percent ethereum 50 percent altcoin type of structure but yeah, so those are some of the main investment strategies that I think would be worth, you know, looking into and maybe trying out yourself. But let me know. Let me know down in the comments which one of these different investment strategies, which structure do you think is the best one, and which one are you going to be using, and how do you have your cryptocurrency portfolio structured? I'd really, I'm really curious about how you guys are going about your investments because this is just my opinion. You know, I'm not, I'm not going to, you know, say I'm, I'm some kind of crypto guru who knows exactly the right you know, proportions and percentages to, you know, allocate your portfolio. This is just, to me, these, these different strategies make sense to me. So I, I thought it was worth sharing with you guys, but let me know what you think. So with that, I'm going to conclude this video. So, you know, if you learned something here, if you like this video, give it a like, hit that thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. If you want to get some more cryptocurrency related content. And also, I just want to say thank you to all the new subscribers that have come on recently. I remember I was getting, you know, kind of hyped about having, you know, like 700 or so subscribers. And, you know, since then, that's been a couple days since then. Last I checked, I'm at well over a thousand subscribers. I think I'm at 1300 subscribers. So thank you to all the new subscribers that have come on recently. I really appreciate your viewership and your support for this channel. So, yeah, um, that being said, I'm going to wrap it up, wrap up this video. Hopefully you had a great day and peace out.